Hello everyone, this is Apostle Misha Softier for our Sunday night edition of Study in the Word. And tonight, uh, the topic is going to be Distracted by the Enemy. Amen. And this is certainly a season for distraction, it seems like. Okay, so I want to begin with just a word of prayer. <clears throat> I guess I will allow also a few people to come on that uh, I, I think I started a couple minutes early always, so... Uh, but you got to be here on time, okay, for sure. Um, so, Father, I, I pray right now, Lord, that you'll just strengthen me, Lord, to bring your word, bless this word, Lord, for the strengthening, Lord, in our, in our, our spirits, Lord, of just being able to walk with you during these times that we live in. Lord, let the words uh, bear fruit in our hearts. You said my spirit, my words are spirit in their life. And so, Father, tonight I pray that the Word of God will bear fruit in the hearts of all of us that hear it. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray even for myself, Lord, as I bring the Word, Lord, that you speak to me through your own Word. In Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen. 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 Wow. Well, uh, <clears throat> while I give people a chance to sign on since we came on just a little early, uh, I just want to make a few announcements. Some. Um, my book, Escape from Apostasy, has finally been released. Uh, it is available already. Um, the live edition, or I should say the live uh, uh, paperback edition, should be ready to go uh, to be purchased tonight. Um, I, they were ready last night, but I made a last-minute change on it. The ebook is already ready to go, and it's out there. I decided to publish through Kindle Publishing, uh, which is... Um, uh, Amazon, uh, a division of Amazon.com. So I have it in ebook form and also, hello Beatrice, how are you doing? God bless you. Uh, so I have it in Kindle already out. Tonight it should go out uh, on paperback and it can be bought um, <clears throat> if you buy it through Amazon.com uh, uh, for fifteen ninety nine. Um, there are bookstores that will be selling it and and wherever books are sold, their prices are what they are since they're retail, so I don't know what they're going to sell them for. Uh, I tried to come down as low as I could for everybody else um, because my main desire is to get the word out, but I don't want to, I can't sell it for less for, for um, less than it costs me to get uh, copies of it myself for distribution. And so what I'm doing for those that want to buy the book directly from me is I'm selling it for, um, I think it's $12 uh, plus the cost of shipping, whichever that would be media mail, probably just a few dollars. Uh, and uh, to those that are uh, in churches where I speak at, I'll bring it w uh, copies with me. And I should have those probably, I'm guessing, within the week. Um, I'll have copies of my book, my own book. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, I'll be, it'll be, a, it'll, it'll be a great book. I'm, I'm not going to go into a whole lot about it now. But um, I checked all the other bookstores and secular stores, and there's nothing written like it. The Lord uh, came to me and told me to write the book, gave me the title for the book. And when I heard it, I thought, I don't know, Lord, if I should be writing on this, Escape from Your Past. I figured I've had, I've had my own past. But as I, I realized how I overcame that, <clears throat> I, I began to realize in the course of, uh, or the process of writing this for five years, which is what it took, because I covered absolutely everything you could imagine. Um, I realized that, you know, God knew what he was doing when he had me write it and, uh, gave me the words through the Holy Spirit to put the book together. And I think it's a book that will help a lot of people, in both whether you're in ministry or out of ministry. It doesn't matter. God will use this word to just give you victory and help you to get victory and to find victory and to find a relationship with him despite what you've been through. Whether you're the victim or whether it's become you're the perpetrator, okay, um, or whether, you know, through no fault of your own, Things have happened in your past. Um, this will be a good book for you. So I really do encourage those of you uh, that uh, can get it to get it. Okay. Um, tonight I'm going to speak about uh, being distracted, distracted by the enemy. Um, and we want to make sure during these days of distraction, because they're they're here. I mean, you can't turn on the TV. It just seems to be one thing after another uh, that's, that's going on if you watch the news or if you get into social media. And as I thought about it today, I realized 
all of this is designed to be a distraction, especially for the Christian. Um, people go to church on Sunday, and many, many churches are barely open, if they're open at all. Um, some have met underground all along, um, and others have are gone strictly online. Uh, but I've noticed that there are many Christians that used to attend church faithfully that because they don't have services now are not even going on to the online services to watch but are filling their time with other things and they're being distracted and we don't want to be distracted. So I want to talk tonight a little bit about Nehemiah who after captivity of the uh, Jews or the Israelites in Babylon uh, was allowed to go back to uh, Israel and rebuild the wall uh, that had been torn down and how there were those in the local area, local tribes and stuff that did not want to see the wall around Jerusalem rebuilt. And so they began to try to set up arguments and distractions. I won't go into the whole thing. If you want to read the whole story, you might want to go to Nehemiah chapter 5 and Nehemiah chapter 6, okay? You could even maybe go into the 7th if you want. Uh, but I think Nehemiah 5 and 6 would do it. But tonight I'm going to read from Nehemiah chapter 6, and I just want to read the first, um, <clears throat> probably the first f uh, four verses. And I think that this will get the message across uh, to each one of you of what you need to hear. So uh, we can begin now, and we'll start with uh, verse 1 of Nehemiah uh, chapter 6. I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to get there. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so now, so when, 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 now when it was reported to Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, the Arab, and to the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and that no breach remained in it, although at that time I had not set up the doors and the gates, then Sanballat and Geshem sent a message to me saying, come, let's meet together at Cherephim in the plain of Ono, but they were planning to harm me. So I sent a me a messengers to them saying, I'm doing a great work and I can't come down or I cannot come down. Why should I, uh, why, why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? And they sent messages to me four times in this manner and I answered them in the same way. I'm building a mighty work in God. I'm, I'm doing a mighty work in God and I cannot come down. That's what some versions of this uh, uh, passage read. Sanballat, Geshem, Tobiah, they were uh, certain people that were coming. And I don't know how, if, how, how it is in your, your, your personal life or in, in, in maybe the life of the church. I think in the life of the corporate church or body of Christ, we are seeing a lot of Sanballats, Tobias, and Geshems in the form of, uh, of big distractions. Uh, coming to attack the church, but we are as individuals the church of God, <clears throat> and as individuals the enemy comes in little ways to distract us. Whether there's little confrontations and things that that are going on at uh, at home or, or issues going on in the family, um, uh, whether there's financial issues or health issues or other things, there's just multitudes of things that happen, and it's at those times, folks for every one of us as Christians, that we have to decide where our focus is going to be. We have to decide what are we going to look at, okay? I think about Jesus and how he set his face like flint, looking neither to the left nor to the right, as he knew that he had come to earth to die, but he set his face to the cross, and he wouldn't let anything, not the devil or circumstances or anything, uh, deter him or, 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 or sway him away persuade him away or move him away from his mission and and, and that was the, the, to die he was born to die for mankind i think of the apostles in great the great apostles in the bible and the disciples and how they were called to do what god had commissioned them to do and they would not uh, allow themselves to be distracted. Do you think about all the things that could distract a person in life? And life in in some ways in those days and in today are really not that different. I mean, there were women, there were men, there were relationships, there were the typical things, lust of the flesh, pride of life, um, uh, the devil. And there, were, there were so many things that were there 
to that that could distract a person from accomplishing what it was that God wanted to do through them. Okay, and so the question that I would ask you to this evening is, are you being distracted? Okay, or do you have the heart of a Nehemiah that says, look, I haven't got time to deal with you and to deal with this issue and to deal with this, uh, that, that issue right now. I'm building a mighty work. I'm doing a mighty work in God, and I cannot come down. Okay, folks, there are the Sanballats and Tobias and Geshams in our lives that come to try to distract us from doing the will of God. They happen every day. Um, even today in, in, in my own uh, life at home, just little things that, that, that happen during the course of the day that uh, they're, they're not major or anything, but they, 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 they can aggravate and agitate you enough just to get your focus off enough not to do what God wants you to get done for that particular day. This is not a question, folks, so much of going out and sinning, although it could be, because the sin of omission is when you don't do what you know that you're supposed to do. Okay, and sometimes that can, that in itself, not doing what we know we should do, comes because we're distracted, okay? But the reality of the matter is that the enemy is always continually coming to harass and to distract us. The Bible says he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what he wants to do, to steal kill, and destroy it in any way that he can to stop you, to hinder you, to slow you down, to keep you from doing what it is that God wants you to do. This uh, tonight will be a short lesson and a simple lesson, but it's important that we speak the truth, okay? Some might say, oh, geez, you know, I've been waiting for this all week and all I got was 15 or 20 minutes. Folks, it's not the length and duration of time that a minister preaches, okay? It's the content and quality of the message, and, and, and that you're getting it, that we're speaking the Word of God. Okay, I'm not here to entertain anybody or to give you your full hour or full half hour so you can feel like you really heard heard, heard a long message or a lengthy message today. What's, what's more important to me is that you're getting it in your heart and in your spirit. Okay, we have to have a new mindset. The Bible says that our, our minds are, are renewed. Okay, we're transformed. The Bible says we're actually, let me, let me re-quote it, that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so the Word of God renews our mind. It changes our mind. It, it helps us, okay, to where we can uh, move away from being the person that we used to be in life to the person that God wants us to be today. Okay, and so I, I think we could all rejoice in the fact that, that, that our minds are being transformed and being renewed, okay, through the Word of God. But, folks, for that to happen, we have to be in the Word of God. We can't be so distracted from it that we uh, just um, get pulled away. I don't know. I was sitting there thinking about how things happen. You know, the Bible says it's the small foxes that destroy the vine. It's not so much something comes down and knocks the tree down in one moment. It's just the little foxes that destroy the vine by, you know, eating the fruits off of it and, and, and little things like that. Uh, the point being that it's the little things, okay, that, that end up just nibbling away at your faith. It's the little things that, come, that you, you allow into your life that one day you look back and you wonder, what happened to my walk with God? I used to feel so close to God. I used to be so dedicated, so committed. I wanted to read my Bible. I wanted to pray. But what happened in your life was the small foxes destroyed the vine. What happened in your life was Tobias, Sanballat, and Geshem got you to come off the wall and and, and to converse with them and the, so the, the wall wasn't completed and it didn't get built. Folks, right now, you're building, doing a mighty work in God. It's like Nehemiah rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. God has commissioned you to do certain things. And, 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 and the Sanballats, Tobias, and Geshams of the world through circumstances and through things want to get you off that wall and distracted and away from the thing that God wants you to do so that it's not so much that you're out there blatantly sinning, maybe in adultery or doing those venal sins that we think are so bad you just shot somebody or something. This is not what we're talking about. All that could be bad too, of course. But it's just that it's not so much that you're out there creating these, these, these terrible, terrible sins. It's just that you're not doing anything. 
that you're not really doing what God wants you to do, that you've gotten lazy, you've become a spiritual couch potato, um, you've spent more time watching Netflix and doing other stuff, maybe running around town and running errands because there's no church on today on Sunday or, 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 or things like that. And so you, in, in, in the process of this thing happening, you begin to lose your focus. But I, I'm finding two things are really happening right now. Maybe uh, right now we're seeing the split that the Bible talks about, that in the last days the wheat and the tares would be separated from one another. Or the, maybe what we're seeing right now is a split, and we're seeing the true church from the false church being divided. And, 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 and maybe we're seeing it through this COVID thing, okay? Even God can use difficult and terrible situations, but he can work them for his good. And I sometimes wonder... If because of this and the closure of churches and people not being so wrapped around church, if you understand what I'm saying, they go and, and, and everything is about the church and not about the Lord. It's about the church. about the, And they feel that they fulfill their duties to God by being in a church, being in a place on Sunday morning. Okay, but, if, but that's not relationship, folks. People go to churches in every city, in every state, in every town. Uh, every uh, every street corner on Sunday mornings, and a lot there are many people that go to church that don't have a relationship with Christ. So the question, and what I'm getting back to, is that maybe this closure of the church has caused a, a, a light to shine on our hearts, and God to illuminate to show us where we're at. And and what I think is happening here is that people are either now because they don't have a place to go in many cases. They're being distracted, and Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem have gotten into their lives and to pull them away from the church and away from. When I say the church, I'm talking about yeah the the uh, corporate worship that we could even be doing online, okay? Or or it's but but probably would be better to say that Sanballat, Tobiah, and, and Geshem have got them off the wall and out of focus and away from God, or Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. Are, are, are yelling, come down, talk with us. Let's let's talk a while. You don't have to do it all right now. Come on, we got some time. We can hang out. You know, we can talk. Let's let's have a drink together. Let's sit back and talk together. Let's be distracted. Let us distract you. And you've gotten off the wall. Or you've stayed on the wall and you said, look, I'm doing a mighty work in God. COVID hasn't changed my mighty work in God. Circumstances have not changed the, the, my, my mission in God. I've got something that God wants me to do. And I'm not coming down off this wall to talk to you about it because you don't mean any good to me. You're you're out to harm me and to hurt me. Um, you want to argue with me because that was what they said. They they were trying to entrap him to come down off the wall so they could do something to him. And he perceived that and he knew these people are not my friends. They're my enemies. I need to stay up here and do what God has called me to do. Folks, you have to have the perception and you have to pray, God, help me during these times, during these difficult times that we're going through, during these distracting times that we're going through to keep my focus on you and do that work in you and not come down. Amen. I, I, I pray, folks, that you're you're getting this word this, this um, evening and that this will, will speak to your heart as you wake up to a Monday morning, uh, not, 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 not just tonight, because I know that it'll have its effect tonight. But tomorrow, will you remember what I'm, what I minister to you today? And when you get into maybe midweek or next Friday or even next Sunday, will you remember that Satan is trying to distract you through things, through circumstances? He's trying to get you away and off the wall from doing his perfect will. Folks, if there's any, everybody that's listening to me out here t tonight, you're a target of this. This is not happening to, to just just to Beatrice, okay, or, or, or a few others that are watching. It, although it, I know it is happening to her, and it's happened, it's because it, it, the enemy tried to hit me with it. You know, none of us are above this, okay. We are all open to attacks by the devil, but how we handle that is up to us. It all comes down to the choices that we make, okay. Nehemiah had a choice when Sambalot, Tobiah, and Geshem came to him and they wanted him to get off the wall, he had a choice to make, okay? God didn't make him stay on the wall. He could have come down off the wall and, and engaged in conversation with them and ultimately gotten killed or, or injured or something, and, the, and the, then the wall would have been delayed and it wouldn't have been finished. The project would not have been done. It would have had been finished maybe by somebody else. Or he could stay and make a choice to stay 
and do what God wanted him to do. You know, there's a scripture, I think it's in the book of Deuteronomy, or it's in Chronicles, I think Deuteronomy, you have to go back and look. But it says something to the effect of this, you know, that uh, today I've set before you a, a path of either life and death, a blessing, or a curse. Choose life. That That's the whole thing. See, but, but my, the emphasis here that I'm trying to give you is it's your choice. Choose life. You can either choose life and be blessed or choose death, okay? And you have to make the choice. You've got to decide, am I going to stay on the wall? Am I going to do what God wants me to do? Am I going to... I'm going to pray, I'm going to find out what God's will is, and I'm going to do it. And some people say, well, you know, that's the problem. I really don't know what God wants me to do. Well, you can start because the Bible says do the work of an evangelist. So start right there. If you got, uh, it was funny, I was doing a pastor's school um, for, for uh, or, or, or I should say school of ministry out at uh, 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 a church out in Desert Center. Um, uh, I think it was on Wednesday. Was it Wednesday or Tuesday? I think I can't remember. Tuesday or Wednesday night, and I got, I'm going to be going there every every other every other Tuesday to minister to to speak to both men and women that believe God has called them into ministry. And if you're a disciple of Christ, God has called you into ministry one way or another. Okay, whether it's from the pulpit or from something else. But I was going to <clears throat> I was there, and one of the uh, gentlemen said, "You know, when I came here, I really just came because." I, I didn't have anything else to do. I thought that, you know, it was what I was supposed to do or what I should do, but I, I had no inkling or no clue really as to, to, to you know, what, what I'm going to do or why I'm really here. But as I sat here, I realized I have a ministry. And I'm going to start, he said, by, by I'm not going to, with, with, I'm not going to start with any big goals of being in front of a pulpit or in front of a church, but I'm going to start by being an evangelist to my family. And he, he decided he was going to start event by evangelizing his own family. And that really touched me because, see, you know, th there's the old saying that charity begins at home. But, but, the, but, but, but the idea was that we can all do something, okay? You could all, when the word says, do the work of an evangelist, you don't have to be in, in the pulpit screaming at anybody or preaching. You don't have to be on the street corners. You can. And if God opens the door for you, fine. But if he doesn't, there is always somebody out there, okay, that needs to hear the word of God that you can talk to, that you can share your testimony with. And and so, but, but the problem is that there are so many of us that are just unaware of what's going on around us because we're so focused on ourselves. And we're just thinking about me, 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 and what I can get for myself and what I'm going through and what's happening to me right now, that we, we've lost our focus on the people around us when we could actually impart a word of God to them or bless them in some way and, and, and bring Christ to them. And, you know, folks, when you do that, you're going to find that your own needs are met. I learned a long time ago, I learned it in ministry when I started out, that if I took care of God's business, he would take care of mine. I wouldn't have to worry about my own. And there's a scripture that says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, well, you know the scripture, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added to you. That's a statement of fact, okay? That's a promise. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all other things will be added to you, which translates to me, if I'm going to paraphrase it somewhat, okay, if I will take care of God's business, he will take care of of mine. Folks, if you take care of God, of God's business, he will take care of yours. Okay? And so, what can we do? Stay on the wall. Keep building the wall. Keep doing what God has called you to do and don't let Sant and Balot, Geshem and Tobiah or any of the three come down with any distractions to keep you from doing what God wants you to do. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't say hi to a family member. It doesn't mean that you don't cook dinner um, or, 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 um, or, or clean the house or do, to take care of your, or It doesn't mean you skip work. It doesn't mean you don't do your normal responsibilities. We're talking here, and let's make it clear, we're talking about distractions that come uh, uh, you know, with the intent, with a clear intent of keeping you from doing what it is that God has called you to do or what he wants you to do, Okay. So I hope that this ministers uh, some encouragement to you. And so we just want to pray a, a closing prayer and seal this word to your spirit. Father, I, I thank you so much for those that have come on tonight. 
and listened. Father, I pray this that, that, that each one that, that has heard your word, Lord, will share it with others on their friend list, that they can listen to it. Maybe they'll share it with others because they all have friends that I don't have. And we can get your word around to other places, Lord. And I pray that you'll seal this word to each one of our spirits so that it becomes alive within our hearts, a living word. You said in your word, my spirit, my words are spirit and they're life. And that means, Father, they, they, they produce something when they go forth. And so, Lord, I pray tonight that they are sealed to each one of our spirits and they produce fruit in each one of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and I thank you for it. Amen. Well, folks, uh, I pray God bless you tonight with this study in the Word. It wasn't too long. Um, we'll be back uh, on Thursday night, this Thursday night at 8 p.m. And my wife, lovely Softier, will be bringing the message on Thursday. And she's a great speaker. She always has an excellent word. And um, I think she's better than I am, to be honest with you. I really do. I, my, 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 my skills are probably in writing. But, but she's just a really good speaker and, and uh, always has a, a great word. She ministers uh, uh, encouraging me messages to me. She knows the Lord. She knows his voice. And uh, so I encourage you to be with me and be with us here at um, Studying the Word at 8 o'clock uh, on Thursday. Okay, so the Lord bless you. This is Apostle Misha Softier, and I'm signing out for the evening, and I'll see you Thursday night. God bless. Bye-bye.